mega technical analysis part two, what I'm seeing in the charts is only what I'm making my predictions based off of. I'm not taking into account business models or fundamentals or insider ownership or anything outside of what I'm seeing in the charts. Starting off with ticker symbol CLNE, we do have this bull fly that we did just break to the upside. Let's go ahead and draw up a price target to see where this may go short term. If we did just confirm, we are confirming the breakout currently. Our price target is going to roughly be above $22, $22.08 roughly. That's going to be where we are looking at, but we are seeing some resistance right now off this 55-day moving average. That's going to be this one that I'm highlighting right now. And we did recently have a death cross when these smaller three moving averages, four, four moving averages, um, excuse me, three moving averages crossed underneath this 55 day. That is going to be a death cross, but we still do have the golden cross over from, uh, this, this with this 200 day EMA, which that is the most important golden cross in my opinion. On the daily chart, we have all of the golden crosses still going on. I believe, yes, we do have all the golden crosses going on on the daily chart. But on the two hourly, we do, we are going to see some resistance here short term. Let's turn on the bands, see if we can get any indication for price action and in the near future. We are seeing some decreased volatility that is indicated to me by the hooking in slightly of these bands. That means it is likely to kind of consolidate for a short term. And of course, these bands and any of these indicators that we are looking at can be wrong at any time. Taking a look at the relative strength index, we are looking on the two hourly chart, we're looking at 55, 54. So we are basically neutral. Let's look at the daily relative strength index. Uh, okay, we're still roughly the same, 60. So, okay, so we are on the overbought side, so be careful if you are getting in this. But guys, if you would like to play the, play the breakout, the price target is here. If we, if we do come back to test this descending level of resistance that I'm going over right now, this level, if we come back here to roughly uh, anywhere in the 1466 all the way down to at the close today, 1448, those are going to be good entry points if you're bullish on this company. I don't know anything about these companies. Well, I know a little bit, but we're not going over what I know about them. We're just going over what I'm seeing in the charts and the technicals. So those are going to be your entry points. You can play the breakout. Just make sure it confirms this as the new support. Um, and look for a bounce off that and then ride the wave higher. And guys, don't set your sell orders at 2206. All right. I just play this, you know, all these support levels. They were, they're the Fibonacci levels. They're now going to act as resistance because we did confirm the breakdown and they were previous levels of support. So you're going to have resistance coming at 1629, 1720, 1767 and 1990. And that's all time highs or at least 52 week highs, I believe. Um, so yeah, there's going to be major resistance there. So guys, don't set your sell order here. Just take profits whenever you feel comfortable, all right? Because, you know, at any pro at any time when you're in the green, that's okay to take profits. You know, it depends on the situation and everything, if this is a long-term hold for you. But just, just keep all that stuff in mind. Okay, that's pretty much what we're looking at as far as this one. XONE, we are in a bull pennant right now, and we are currently, as I'm speaking, trying to confirm the breakout. We had a false breakout with this long candle green wick above this, above this descending level of resistance. But as of now, we need to see a confirmation to actually enter a trade to actually play the breakout. If you want a high probability trade, of course, you can just go in here and play your luck if you want to, if you're extremely bullish, you know, I don't recommend that by any means. But if we do see rejection and start coming down and you're bullish on this company, short term, these are going to be your entry points. $40.80 all the way up to today's close, uh, $41.20. Anywhere in that range will probably do you pretty well if you are bullish on this company short term. Uh, this ascending level, anything here should be, should be pretty good. We do have several validations going as far back as the 7th in January. We also are going to have, if we do dip below, actually, if we do dip below this ascending trend line, then you're going to be looking at an, an even more auspicious entry point, in my opinion. Sitting at this 50% retracement level, $38.30, that would do you extremely well. If we dip anywhere below that, you're going to have the 200-day EMA coming up, acting as a support. And we are fairly neutral right now, actually, on the four-hourly chart. So that is actually a pretty bullish sign. We did recently see a, a strong move going from like $38 all the way up to, you know, right now, uh, 49 And we're not not that overbought because you know we obviously are we're, we were pretty oversold obviously we were all we were almost in the 30s 35 not too long ago so look look for a confirmed breakout if you want to play the breakout watch to make sure we get a bounce off of this previous level of resistance this descending level right here um taking a look at the moving averages on the daily um we do have the golden cross um as far as we do have all the golden crosses okay with all of these moving averages um this is an extremely bullish sign 
if you would have got in right when this cross started to form, obviously you'd be looking very nice right now. Um, we are kind of, we did see some support coming in from these moving averages and we are currently trading above them. So if we do see a slight pullback, you will see them start to act as a little bit of resistance or a little bit of support, excuse me. Um, taking a look at the bands and see if we can get an indication of price action and where it will go short term. Uh, they are pretty far away right now. They are pretty, there is a fair amount of distance below, a distance between these two outside Bollinger bands, but there's not, they're not really doing anything right now. Um, this this uh, this one right here, this bottom one, is kind of hooking out. That does inc that does indicate a small amount of increased volatility, but there's really not any clear indication based on the bands in this example. Um, we are in a bull pennant though. Let's draw up the price target to see where we will actually be trading if this bull pennant was were to come to fruition. We're going to be looking at roughly seventy-seven dollars and thirty cents, guys. It's an extreme. That's like what almost. That's almost. That's like eighty, ninety percent ish, something like that. So this is extreme. Uh, this is extremely bullish. Obviously, you know, if it does, if it does trade sideways up until this breakout day on the twenty-second, that's going to be an that's going to be an extremely auspicious entry point. Just make sure that we do not break to the downside, because if we do break to the downside, your price target is going to be. All the way down here on this 100% retracement level, sitting at roughly ten dollars and fourteen cents. So that's just just keep that in mind. If you're bullish on this company, be careful. Make sure that you are break that they are breaking. If you don't, if you do continue to trade in this symmetrical triangle, this bull pennant or bull flag, whatever you want to call it, make sure that you break to the upside on the 22nd or 23rd. Yeah, 23rd, I guess. Um, one of those two days, definitely. And it could break out anytime, guys, as price action, price action will continue to get basically squashed in this, in this triangle, but essentially that's, that it's going to be condensing, going to be less, less, uh, volatility and a breakout will be imminent. It can have, I mean, it's trying to confirm the breakout right now as we are speaking. So that's pretty much what I'm seeing in the charts for X, O, and E. Taking a look at ticker symbol SE, we are pushing higher right now. We recently did validate this level of ascending support that has been validated going as far back as in the 27th in January. We did push higher. We got a significant bounce, and we recently also did have the golden cross between the 50-day, 55-day moving average, and we had the 13, the 15, and the 21-day moving averages go and cross above it, and the 55-day cross underneath that is a golden cross. We still have the golden cross between the 200-day EMA. Let's take a look at the daily so we can see it easily. Okay, we actually have had that like forever, okay, but we are still, there is still a significant gap between that, so that is a bullish sign. Um, let's take a look at the bands, see if we can get some indication on price action. Um, okay, so we are seeing a little bit of a hook out. We are seeing the distance between these two outside bands increase a little bit. So you are going to see some increased volatility potentially to go up and retest all time highs. We did get a bounce off this ascending level of support. There is a chance, but we are seeing some selling pressure. And that's indicated to me by this candle wick that is up. That basically, that basically means that they were trying to, the, the bulls were trying to push the price up and then sellers came in. People were taking profits. And that basically is why the price is not, by this candle is not all the way up here. That, that long green candle with that is what indicates that to me. If you're looking for an entry point, guys, I would be a little careful. Let's take a look at the RSI. Okay, we're, we are overbought. We are almost uh, at 70. We're at 69, 30, 39 on the daily. Um, on the four hourly, we are not quite as overbought, we're, but still, guys, I mean, let's just take a look at the, uh, the macroeconomic trend here. We are, you know, we are consistently in an uptrend here. Um, so just be careful if you are looking to get into the stock. I would not be chasing personally. And if you are, if you are extremely bullish on the stock, a potential entry point is going to be this ascending level. If we touch this again before testing all time highs or at least 52 week highs, I believe. Anywhere, if you can get it right here, if we dip, uh, like in a couple hours here, uh, $260, that is going to be a very strong level of support. I say that because we have this 23.6% retracement level sitting there. And then this ascending level is going to be intersecting basically perfectly at that time. If, even if it, even if you can't get it exactly here, if you can get it on right here or right here, that's going to be an extremely good entry point in my opinion. Um, so there's not really, there's not really much else to say with this one. Um, we are holding this, uh, 23.6% retracement level very nicely. That indicates to me that we are primed for a move higher that will be very strong. I say that because typically when you hold the higher support levels, such as the 23, 38, 50, or 61, that, that these four levels will indicate a higher move, uh, in the future and a stronger move as opposed to if we came all the way down to the 78.6% retracement and also the, the higher one you hold 
like this one, you're going to get a higher move probably if you than if you came down to this one. Okay, um, so that's essentially what we're looking at. We are going to see a little bit of support coming in from these moving averages if we dip slightly, but I would not be surprised if we do test this reascending level of support before testing 285 but of course a news catalyst can come uh you know we are seeing some more selling pressure right now obviously um, we did just have a recent move higher on the daily rsi we are fairly overbought um so just keep that in mind when it comes to this one PLTR, we did recently, unfortunately, but this was a very good op good buying opportunity. Um, but it is kind of since kind of passed a little bit. Okay, but we were in this bull pennant right here. I know this chart is a little confusing. Just stay with me. I will explain it for you. We were in the symmetrical triangle. We have a descending resistance line and an ascending support line that did go back actually pretty far all the way back actually wow this goes all the way okay this goes all the way back to the november all right well we did break this unfortunately for shareholders but with this was an amazing buying opportunity we did confirm the breakdown from this level right here and then we did confirm the breakout and breakdown again very brutal day especially for people who bought in at 45 right you're sitting at basically 50 percent down right now but we did uh get a bounce in this area uh, in the 61.8 percent retracement area roughly and now we basically essentially got rejected from this previous level of support we do have one validation here a couple here and now we just validated again we got a false breakout but we are not able to confirm the breakout so it is a validation nonetheless where do i see this going short term well let's take a look at the daily rsi okay we are pretty oversold we are looking at 45 okay so this does it this does represent some more upside a lot of people are very bullish on this company um this was a great buying opportunity if you were able to get in right here 24 um if you would like to take profits i mean this there are going to be a lot of resistance levels coming up you maybe be, will be able to enter a little lower but right now macroscopically i do predict a I, I could definitely see a move higher in the near term but maybe not like today or next trading day but definitely like the next couple weeks based on this chart pattern we will probably be seeing some more upside but guys the price target based on this bull pennant would be i mean you know <laughs> <laughs> all the way down there let's go to the daily and see okay your price starts going to be under below twenty dollars but guys the the, bull, the bulls are not going to be able not going to let the stock go that low there's a ton of bulls on this company they will be buying shares pretty much at every dip um but if we do get rejected here another if you do see this happen it may not happen your first level to watch is going to be right where we bounced off of the last not last time so twenty four dollars and fifty one cents and if it dips below that this sixty one point eight percent retracement level sitting at roughly twenty three dollars and 88 cents those are going to be your two entry points those are amazing entry points if you want to get in now it's not bad because you know we are oversold we're on the oversold side sitting at roughly 43 dollars or not 43 43.85 on the relative strength index let's take a look at the band see if we can get some indication of where price action is likely to go we are seeing some decreased volatility indicated to me by the hooking end of these bands that likely means that there's a higher chance based on these bands that we will be seeing a rejection because we would need a lot of volatility in the upwards direction but with bullish sentiment to actually break out of this resistance level. So that's pretty much what the Bollinger Bands are indicating to me. Let's take a look at the moving averages on the daily. Um, we are seeing a little bit of a death cross okay that is i know that sounds scary for all of you but okay but we do have, we do still we are maintaining the golden cross that we had back here between the 200 ema and the 15 day ma i'm getting the red the red one and the orange one essentially that's the most important golden cross in my personal opinion but we do have the death cross okay we do have the 13 day moving average which is the darker uh moving average i know it's really complicated i can barely see it too okay and, and i know you guys probably will have a hard time seeing it but as you can see the gray one did basically the smaller moving averages the 13 and the 15 did cross below the 21 day moving average on the daily and the daily moving averages are usually going to be your most significant levels uh, of support and resistance when it comes to moving averages in my opinion but they all act as resistance levels okay essentially and support levels okay on the four hourly we did see a little bit of resistance on this 200 day ema okay this is extremely bearish news because the ema the price action we, we got we have several we pretty much have every death cross in the book right now Okay, we're, we're, we're trading below the, the, the recent price action uh, moving averages, the 13, the 15, and the 21 day moving averages. These three right here that are right on the price action, they all crossed below and underneath the 200 day EMA and the 55 day. That's an extremely bearish uh, indicator. So, you know, and they are going to act as resistance. If we do break this trend line, this ascending resistance, there's going to be some a lot of uh, resistance levels as far as these moving averages go. 
that is bearish. All right. But I would not be freaking out if I was a shareholder or you, if you bought, especially if you bought the dip here, you're probably fine. Cause guys, I, I do follow the stock a little bit and there are a ton of bulls on this. This was a good uh, dip buying opportunity in my opinion. Um, you're seeing a, a ton of volume. Okay. And you're not seeing much red volume. So what that indicates to me is these people that bought the dip, they are holding, they're not looking for a quick buck. They're actually long-term investors potentially. So that is a bullish sign as well, but just keep this guy, keep this in mind. This is probably a good long-term hold, especially if you can get it in the entry points we've mentioned. It's not a horrible buy right now based on the RSI because the RSI is essentially my number one indicator for everything. Okay. The RSI is like probably the best indicator in my opinion. If you had to go with one thing, it would probably be RSI and insider ownership, but I would don't know the insider ownership. This is just technical analysis, short-term predictions, disregarding fundamentals. So there's a lot of stuff with this one. Okay. Uh, if you can get on these entry points, that's an amazing buy right now. Now it's a decent buy at the current level if you are extremely bullish on this company. If not, I would stay away, guys. And personally, stocks like this, there's better opportunities out there, in my opinion. But you guys do what you want, right? Do your own due diligence and research. And that's pretty much what I'm seeing as far as PLTR goes. Taking a look at FRSX. We did, we are looking for a bounce currently. We are kind of getting rejected by these moving averages on the four hourly chart. We did get a, we did get a small bounce though off this ascending level of support that if we do break, guys, I'm not trying to alarm you guys if you're a shareholder in here, but if we do break this, we are likely to see like a, anywhere from like a five to 15 to 20% pullback. If we do confirm the breakdown or not, there's not there. I'm just telling you, if we do break this level of support, there's a high chance that we will go down to test this level. And then we will test this, this 200 day exponential moving average on the four hourly. And guys, we have a ton of resistance levels. Okay. We did have a death cross recently. Okay. This 55 day moving average, the three, uh, smaller moving averages, the orange one, the, the light blue one. I know these are like all light blue levels, but just look over here. Okay. That's, this is basically your key to the moving averages. Okay. We had the 15, the 13 and the 21 day moving averages. These three, they moved underneath this 55 day moving averages. That is a death cross and that is an extremely bearish, uh, indicator. But if we take a look at the daily chart, okay, we are still looking at, okay. Um, it's a little hard to see where exactly these are, but they are still, we do still have the golden cross as far as these three currently. Okay. Barely, barely. They just recently, we did just recently have the golden cross with these three, but that's not really, uh, it's not really an extremely, that's not really an extremely important indicator. The more important ones are going to be the bigger moving averages like these when, when they cross with, uh, with the smaller ones. But nonetheless, you want the smaller, the smallest moving averages to be the closest to price action and the, the more farther away ones to go more far away and order. That's essentially what you're looking for. And we do have that currently. So that is basically a, a small, but still a little bit significant indicator. Looking at the RSI, though, a much more important indicator, in my opinion, we're looking at 5360. So we're essentially neutral. But guys, keep in mind on a stock like this, that was a couple, you know, it was 80 cents in uh, November. When you have a run like this, it's going to be skewed a little bit. So let's look at the short term RSI. Okay, we are looking at 48. So a little more oversold. Four hourly, we're looking at a lot more oversold, looking at 40. 40 on the relative strength index. So we are on the oversold side. If you want to get an entry point on the stock, your first level, of, of course, is going to be this ascending level, essentially where you are trading at now almost. Okay. $8 and 88 cents, uh, roughly. If the markets continue dumping and screwing everyone over, we're definitely going to see that come to fruition because <laughs> they are literally screwing over all my stocks right now. Um, yeah, they're literally screwing them over right now currently. Okay. But that's how the markets go. You got to hold through them. Okay. But if you are extremely bullish on this company, that's going to be your first level to watch. Second level to watch is going to be this 38.2% retracement level sitting at roughly $8 and 26 cents. Uh, there's a low chance of that being broken, especially since we have validated this so many times in the recent past. If we do break that though, this is going to be basically, I would bet definitely be buying this up if I was, if I was extremely bullish on this company. If this was bio nanogenomics and this was the chart setup, I would be buying it hundred. I would be loading on this 38.2% retracement level and loading even more on this, uh, 200 day EMA on the four hourly chart. Um, so that's essentially what we're looking at as far as the moving averages and the ascending level of support and the trend lines. Okay, looking at the bands, the okay, this is actually really weird that this band is like that. Okay, but these we are seeing basically this one, we are basically seeing them just chill out. Okay, this means decreased volatility. They're not really moving much though. So there's not really indication based on that. Um, but if we do see a breakdown, you know, if we confirm the breakdown, those are going to be your entry points. So that's essentially what I'm seeing as far as F. Uh, RSX goes. Taking a look at INUV, 
We did just break down out of this bull pin, and that is extremely bearish news. Let's actually go ahead and draw the price target. Okay, usually when you break to the downside in a bull pin, it that is usually because of the market dumping, or I mean, well, if it's because of some news catalyst, then this price target does have a high chance of hitting. But usually when you dump out of this because of the markets, okay, the markets are obviously right now literally screwing everyone. Okay, we were doing great, and the Friday sell off is coming to fruition. This sucks, but this price target is going to be roughly sitting at uh, 45 cents. <laughs> Okay, so that is extremely that is extremely bearish news. Obviously, K okay, current K okay, guys, I know about this company. A lot of people are extreme bulls in this company. Okay, this is not this is not a bad company. I know that. Okay, I don't know a ton about it, but what I will tell you is that this price target that we just drew up has an extremely low chance of coming to fruition, especially given that we did bounce up pretty strongly off of this uh, ascending level of support that we have validated several times in the past, going as far back as, as January 11th for, roughly, um, and we also have several more support levels. Okay, if we break, guys, I'm telling you right now, if we break this ascending level. There's a very low chance of breaking this next level because we we have two supports there. We we have the uh, the sixty one point eight percent retracement level, and we also have this green rectangular level of support that has acted as a resistance level in the past before we were at this uh, Fibonacci high that these support levels are drawn off. Keith, so this is going to be an extremely strong level of support. Pair that with the fact that we are pretty oversold on the four hourly. We're looking at 43.18 on the RSI and on the daily, we're looking at 52. So we are a little neutral on the daily, but the daily is a little skewed. Okay. What, why, why is the daily skewed? What the heck does that mean? Okay. Look at what we're trading. We're trading at 31 cents. Now we're trading above a dollar. Okay. So this run up basically means the RSI is always going to be a little more biased to being overbought because that daily RSI is more macroscopic and more broad and more big picture than the four hour league. Hey, taking a look at the bands, let's go ahead and put those indicators on real quick. Uh, there's really no indication of where we're going with the bands. They're, they're, they're going out a little bit, which means a little bit more increased volatility, but there's really not much movement there. Not much that we can see based on that. We did see some resistance coming in from this, these moving averages, and we recently did have the death cross. Okay, actually, today we had the death cross. Okay, this 55-day moving average that I'm going over now. The smaller moving averages, the 13-day, the 15-day, and the 21-day moving average, they all crossed underneath it. That is a death cross, extremely bearish. But if we look on the daily, we are still, well, actually, we are kind of, uh, yeah, we did have a death cross here as well, okay? But we do have the most important golden cross is still in effect. Okay, this red line right here, the 200-day exponential moving average is still underneath the 15-day moving average. That is the most bullish and the most important and significant cross between the moving averages in my humble opinion but recently we are seeing a little bit of a we are seeing a little bit of death crossing okay we actually saw that all the way up here okay when we saw this 13 day moving average cross underneath the 15 day moving average that is a, a less significant uh death cross usually the death crosses and golden crosses they're with uh that you want to see typically with a, a large moving average and a small moving average this one is with the smaller ones but guys it is always more bullish when uh the smallest moving averages are closer to the price actually in my opinion okay but matt but if we if you can catch an entry point okay like i said on this rectangular level of support that is what you're going to be looking at we are also guys we actually have a third support that i didn't even mention okay guys look what's also there we have the 200 day exponential moving average right there if this dips i actually may personally be looking to pick up some shares well i probably won't be because i have no dry powder but if i did i would be looking to get an entry point right here on this if this was bio nanogenomics okay i am loading up as much as I can get on this level of support. This is not getting broken unless the markets just, you know, just keep doing what they're doing. Okay. Essentially. <laughs> wow. Okay. That sucks. But if we do hit this level, like we are likely to, because the markets are dumping, definitely load up shares that uh, roughly $1.20, $1.26, uh, $1.15, anywhere in that range is going to treat you extremely well, in my opinion. Taking a look at ticker symbol GEVO, we did recently break down off of this ascending level support a couple of days ago, a couple of trading days ago, and we did bounce very, very strongly currently off of this 50% uh, 50, 50 retracement level sitting at roughly $10. Um, we are seeing some resistance right now coming off of these moving averages though, and we recently did have the, we actually just had the death cross with this uh, this level right here, the 55 day moving average moving above the uh, 15 day, the 13 day, and the 21 day moving average. If you're confused on how I'm getting those numbers right and i'm and i'm remembering all that okay this is the key right here 200 day 15 13 21 55 there you go let's take a look at the band the bollinger band see if we can get an indication 
for price action, we are seeing some increased volatility. That is what it, these bands are indicating to me. And this is actually bearish news. Okay. Typically, when you see them hook out like this, that means increased volatility and it means it is likely to continue the trend of price action that basically started that hooking out. And that means there's a higher chance to go to the downside, but they are kind of chilling out now. They're not hooking out as much. So that could represent some decreased volatility. But, you know, right now we are still very, the, the, the two outside bands are very far away from each other. That means there's going to be high volatility right now. And we recently did get rejected off of this. Uh, I can't even see it because the bands are in the way. Okay, we're, we recently got rejected off of the 21 day uh, moving average. And actually, no, the 55 day moving average. Yeah, sorry, excuse me. The fit, we recently get, they get projected roughly off of this 55 day moving average. And we are currently seeing a little bit of support coming in from these other ones, the 15 day and the 13 day. But, you know, let's look at, let's look macroscopically though. Okay, this is more important in my opinion with the moving averages. Macroscopically, we are, we do have the golden cross still. All the, all the golden crosses are here. Okay. Um, but we are dipping below. We are currently closing below all three of these. That is a bearish sign. And we are likely to see some death crossing soon if we continue to go below. Okay, this 13 day is likely to go below. Um, if we continue to go down, that is going to be a death cross. But if we do dip a little more, guys, let's take a look at this ascending level right here that I have. Um, if we do come all, if we do pull, this is unlikely. Okay. This is very unlikely, but if I know this company, I know a little bit about them. This is very unlikely, but if we pull all the way back to this ascending level of support, that is going to be an extremely auspicious, uh, entry point in my opinion. If the markets continue dumping, okay, they just keep dumping. They, Every time I look back at this, it's dumping more. Okay. You guys see what I'm dealing with. This is the only thing that screws our stocks over. Literally the only thing. And it happens every day. It seems like every time. Okay. But if this continue, if the markets continue to dump, you could see this hit all this all the way down here. This 61.8% retracement level, 873, uh, $9, anywhere in that range. That's going to be an amazing entry point. If you don't get that, that's unlikely to happen, but you'd rather be prepared than being caught off guard. Okay, if you are gonna hit, if you if we do, if you want an entry point right now and you're extremely bullish, 1130s will do you fine. I would not chase right now. Okay, if you're extremely bullish, go ahead. Okay, I mean, we are we are up on the day, but just just realize that let's look at the daily RSI. Okay, we are well, we are actually a little oversold. I mean, we are we're, we're technically a little overbought, but I mean, let's look at the macro. Let's look at the macroeconomic trend. Okay, right, we're going to be a little overbought every time. Um. So for me, I would not, I think there's better plays out here for this personally. Okay. I know a little bit about this company. Okay. This is not the company for me, but if you're extremely bullish, don't, don't have your feelings be hurt by me. I don't like a lot of electric vehicles companies. Okay. So just this is going to be your first entry point. If you're very bullish, second entry point is going to be this 50% retracement level sitting at roughly $10. This 50, this, this, uh, 200 day EMA is going to be next. If you can get an entry point on the sustaining level, that's going to be your best bet, but that's unlikely. So just try to get an entry point on one of these levels if we can. And obviously, you know, okay, we are finally seeing a little bit of bounce, but that's, you know, we'll see if they continue bouncing. Okay. <laughs> so that's pretty much what we're looking at as far as GEVO. Taking a look at ticker symbol CLSK. We do have a false breakout, which is very weird. Okay, we did break out of this bull pennant, and we basically had a couple four hourly closes, and then we went right back in it. Probably has a little bit to do with the market dumping. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I don't follow this company very much. All right, but we are seeing a little bit of support off of these four hourly moving averages. That is a bullish sign. Let's see. We are. Let's see if we confirm the breakdown. Okay, this level, this descending level, should act, should have acted as a level of support. We did confirm the breakout, but essentially, whatever news or whatever seller taking profits whatever happened it was enough to bring it all the way back into this bull pennant let's go ahead and let's let's assume that it's going to move something like this in the future and then roughly on this breakout day roughly the third roughly march march 1st um let's let's see what the price target is actually going to be if we actually came to fruition in this if we actually came back in this bull pennant and then the price target would come to fruition let's see okay i'm just going to go to the daily chart so we can actually see it uh, we're looking at 54, over $54. All right. That's, what is that? That's a, that's like near a 2X. All right. So, <laughs> so that's what you're looking at. And then, of course, not always. That's not guaranteed. Nothing's guaranteed in the stock market. These price, these price targets don't always come to fruition. Okay. The, the downside, if we go to the downside, let's see what the price target is. You know, you're looking at under $10. Okay. So it's extremely bearish if we do that. But guys, this is a bull pennant. This is a symmetrical triangle, a bull flag. Here's the flag pole. Here's the flag. It's a bull pennant. Otherwise known as symmetrical triangle. Okay. There's plenty of names for it, but this is bullish by nature on, on more times than not. It's going to be bullish. If the markets continue dumping, we will all be screwed. But, uh, if you are looking for an entry point in the stock. Your most auspicious entry point is going to be $28. Anywhere from $28 going uh, up until a couple of days more, 
$28 to $29.32, anywhere in that range in the next couple of days. That's going to do you extremely well, in my opinion. Anywhere on this ascending level, you need to draw this up on your own. Though. You can't rely on updates from me about CleanSpark. I'm not going to be covering this very often, okay? This might be the only time I ever cover it, all right, unless it gets requested more, okay? Taking a look at the daily moving averages, let's see what we're looking at. Uh, we did have the Golden Cross. Okay, if you would have got in when this Golden Cross happened between the 55-day MA and the 13, the 15, and the 21-day moving average, you would be, you know, $9 to $20. You'd be up more than 150%. Uh, or at least 100%, okay? We do have the gap between the 200-day EMA and the 15-day moving average. That is the most important golden cross, in my opinion. So that is bullish news. Okay, let's just go ahead and move this price target up. All right, let's be honest. There's a low chance of it going all the way down there, all right, with all these support levels coming up. But if we do confirm the breakdown, those are going to be your entry points anywhere right here. If you like, if you're extremely bullish and you don't think it's dipping that much, this 38.2% uh, retracement level, this will be actually a pretty, pretty strong level probably because we do have all four of these moving averages um right condensing like intersecting right on it that's going to be extremely bullish also we do have uh, a golden cross potentially setting up we have the 55 day moving average the one i'm going over right now this one is crossing underneath the 15 day and the 13 day and it already did that if it if it crosses under this 21 day moving average that's going to be even more bullish so potential golden cross in the making right now so watch out for that. That's going to represent some more bullish sentiment if that happens. And it's going to be a strong entry point. If you don't think it's dipping to this ascending level, that's going to be your entry point right here. Let's put on the band, see if we can get some indication for where price action will go. Okay, this is, we are going to see increased volatility. And this actually is a bullish sign. But we are, well, actually not necessarily because we are not seeing any more, any more uh, hooking out. Okay, this, this means increased volatility the farther these bands are apart. And right now we are seeing a little bit of hooking in, which essentially means decreased volatility. That could mean that we are going to come down here test this and then consolidate for a little bit potentially we will see um taking a look at the rsi let's take a look at the daily rsi relative strength index 5640 four hourly uh we're looking at 62 60 or excuse me 54 54 on the dot case okay, so we're not there's not much indication there we're fairly we're fairly neutral okay i mean we've been in this bull pennant since the 8th of january so we have been consolidating for a while and if we do if we do trade sideways right here this is going to be an extremely auspicious entry point anywhere on this ascending level will be extremely auspicious based on the technicals alone i don't know anything about this company really okay i'm just giving you short-term analysis and predictions based on what i'm seeing in the charts but if you want to play the breakout, uh, watch for a breakout above this resistance level, this descending resistance. Wait for a confirmation off this off this previous level of resistance, and then uh, watch for the validation and the confirmation of it of it being the new support. Or just or or you can just get on this ascending level. Either way is fine. Whatever you want to do, whatever you're better with. But that's essentially what I'm seeing for this ticker. Taking a look at my current positions, uh, there's really not much change here. Uh, I have updated some of these. Okay, this, um, okay, I actually need to zoom out real quick. Hold on. Um, okay, so Sundial, th I did update this earlier today. Uh, I don't know if you saw this in the video. I don't know if it was early enough, but um, I, did up I did update that when we were down all the way down here. Let's just take a look at this real quick. I did update that to a nine, like a thousand nines when we were down here. Okay, I knew this was rebounding a little bit, and we are kind of selling off right now because, of course, my worst enemy, the broader markets are coming in, and they are screwing everyone over, including me. But that's all right. Okay, we got to hold through. We got to hold through. Do not panic sell. Do not sell when the markets are down. Sell when the markets are up. Okay, um, this is what we're looking at. Nothing's really changed. These are all my current positions. Uh, these two, Mara and Materials Corporation, I already took profits on these. So everything else on here are my current positions except these two. Let's change this to, uh, to a green so we know maybe. Okay. Relevant information in regards to the title is finished now. Feel free to click off, my friends, if you have more important things to do. Actually, useful information. Beginners, listen up. Also, this first one's for everyone. I will try to read all some comments, but if you have a serious suggestion, question, consider emailing. Okay, any questions, suggestion y'all got? I, really, I want suggestions. Okay, I'm new to YouTube. If y'all got any suggestions, please let me know. Consider emailing, though. If you email me, I will I will respond 99% sure. 99% of the time, I will respond. If you comment with a question, you have like a 90% chance of response, okay? Because I don't get a lot of the, I try to respond to all of them and like all of them and heart all of them. But sometimes no, YouTube doesn't notify me because, you know, that's YouTube for you. I have notifications on, especially with old videos. They don't even bother with those, okay? But, you know, whatever. It's fine. Um, so consider this. That's my email.
I, I try, yeah, I try to read every, any and reply to any question in the comments, but you will probably, but it will probably get harder to find in the future because more people, uh, when we start getting millions and hundreds, of thousands and tens of thousands of subs and, and views and comments, okay, yeah, <laughs> guys, don't expect this to go on forever. Okay. Y'all are getting the best of it. My early supporters are getting the best of it now, essentially. Um, as far as the comments go for sure. Also, guys, I will make mistakes. Okay. Remember this. Don't expect perfection from anyone. All right. Don't do that. Okay. Don't do that ever in life. Not only investing be careful in the comments bitcoin bots are here most of the time sometimes they just chill they relax some some videos some of them not too much let me know what y'all think of the thumbnails i've only had one response on this let me know if y'all like the thumbnails or you think they could be better or a suggestion email me if you got a suggestion please um yeah okay what does auspicious this actually mean conducive to success unpopular opinion I truly do appreciate the overwhelming majority of comments y'all do not even know how much these help me out and motivate me Please not hesitate to call me out if I'm missing something in the charts or anywhere else. Use several brokers. You should use several brokers because if you're not already using Weeble, you will get free stocks. If you deposit $100 and use the link below, also you get pre market and after hours trading. Extremely important. Follow stocks you want on Reddit and Twitter as well. Comment with stocks I should cover next. Open a Roth IRA. Also, I will cover every stock that I get. I'm currently like. I'm like a two thirds of the way done with this one. I'll probably have to make a part three mega technical analysis, but we're almost done. <laughs> I try to cover every single stock I, I get requested. Some of them, some of them I can't. Um, some of them I've never, a lot of them I've never heard of, but I still cover all of them. I, I try to at least. Um, open a Roth IRA. Another reason why you should use Weeble, they offer them. Comment any questions, I will answer them. Uh, success will not change the business model of this channel, which is no BS, no wasting your time in the relevant section. This is the irrelevant section. This is what we, what I consider and what we consider the irrelevant section. So you're at my mercy if you are staying and watching this part. Um, and you can make this, this, you can participate in affecting the new YouTube standard, which will be this business model. If you support the channel, bio nano to the moon, check the YouTube, check the channel banner as well. Uh, let me know what y'all think of that. Like the banner, like when you go to my channel homepage, like there should be like a, a little BNGO moon thingy that you should see uh, an image. It should be pretty funny. I think it's really funny. Um, so yeah, guys, thank y'all so much. I'll see you on the next one.